beloved brothers and sisters. Because these our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of priests, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church in which they are about to be raised. It is true that God has made his entire holy people a royal priesthood in Christ. Nevertheless, our great priest himself, Jesus Christ, chose certain disciples to carry out publicly in his name and on behalf of mankind a priestly office in the church. For Christ has, was sent by the Father and is he in turn sent the apostles into the world so that through them and their successors, the bishops, he might continue to exercise his office of teacher, priest, and shepherd. Indeed, Christ, priests are established co-workers of the order of bishops with whom they are joined in the priestly office and with whom they are called to the service of the people of God. After mature deliberation, these our brothers are now to be ordained to the priesthood in the order of the presbyterate, so as to serve Christ the teacher, priest and shepherd, by whose ministry his body, that is the church, is built and grows into the people of God, a holy temple. In being configured to Christ the eternal high priest, and joined to the priesthood of the bishops, they will be consecrated as true priests of the New Testament to preach the gospel, to shepherd God's people, and to celebrate the sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. Now, dear sons, you are to be raised to the order of the priesthood. For your part, you will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ the teacher. Impart to everyone the word of God which you have received with joy. Meditating on the law of the Lord, see that you believe what you read, that you teach what you believe, and that you practice what you teach. In this way, let what you teach be nourishment of the people of God. Let the holiness of your lives be a delightful fragrance to Christ faithful, so that by word and example you may build up the house which is God's church. Likewise, you will exercise in Christ the office of sanctifying. For by your ministry, the spiritual sacrifice of the faithful will be made perfect, being united to the sacrifice of Christ which will be offered through your hands in a bloody way to the altar, in union with the faithful in the celebration of the sacraments. Understand, therefore, what you do and imitate what you celebrate. A celebrance of the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection, strive to put to death whatever in your members is sinful, and to walk in newness of life. Remember, when you gather others into the people of God through baptism, and when you forgive sins in the name of Christ and the church in the sacrament of penance, when you comfort the sick with holy oil and celebrate the sacred rites, when you offer prayers of praise and thanks to God, throughout the hours of the day, not only for the people of God, but for the whole world. Remember then that you are taken from among them and appointed on their behalf for those things that appertain to God. Therefore, carry out the ministry of Christ the priest with the constant joy and genuine love, attending not only to your own concerns, but to those of Jesus Christ. Finally, dear sons, exercising for your part the office of Christ, head and shepherd, 
while united with the bishop and subject to him, strive to bring the faithful together into one family, so that you may lead them to God the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit. Keep always before your eyes the example of the Good Shepherd, who came not to be served, but to serve, and who came to seek out and save what was lost.